so hopefully the recording is starting good evening everybody tonight we're taking a look at showcasing your images and what i've got is four to five demonstrations of various applications and uh, various different demonstrations but the, the running theme of which is showcasing your images more so than just printing out an image or just emailing it to somebody so as promised uh, from people who don't have photoshop don't want to spend that kind of money um, i promised to take a look at some alternatives now obviously i'm on a mac so the alternatives uh, are both mac only but I'm going to explain to you how the concepts are so similar right across the board. It wouldn't matter if it was Paint Shop Pro, if it was Photoshop Elements or any other variation of it. They're all very, very similar. But just to show you what I'll be working with first, I'll be taking a look at Acorn. Acorn is £30 from the Mac App Store. So let's have a look at Acorn. Uh, it says installed, if you've not seen the Mac App Store, this is an application that runs on your Mac and, oh, it's dangerous. It is full of software. And uh, you can buy that software instantly and have it downloaded and installed. No serial numbers, numbers to manage, no anything to manage, actually. It's far too easy. So um, I've already purchased this and downloaded it. As I say, it was £29.99. And as you can see from the reviews, it has 12 five star reviews. So everybody loves it. Nobody has given it any less. Um, I like it. It's actually very, very powerful. So uh, what I've done is I've taken a demonstration that I've always given in Photoshop before and uh, redone it in Acorn. So that's the application. Let's get Acorn up and running. And there is the image that I will be working with. Now, if you have ever seen Photoshop, uh, you'll be aware of the fact that on the left hand side of the screen, you usually have a toolbar and in Acorn, it's on the right hand side. But it's a very nice interface. Everything is um, very compact and it's all in one place. So you're not darting about the screen either. It's all in the tools on the right hand side. And if you are using Paint Shop Pro or Photoshop Elements, you should be able to see that that is so, so similar. All the tools have very, very similar icons and do the similar thing. So what I'll be doing here is making this image, which um, is a wedding image, but it's not particularly fantastic. It's probably taken outside a town hall rather than a church and all the trimmings and all the rest of it. So. Nice enough shot of a couple, but uh, it could look a whole lot nicer if you wanted to put this on the cover of a wedding album. And that's what I'll be working with. So I have the file open. It's rather a large JPEG. And one of the things I noticed with Acorn is it tends to lag quite badly if the file is huge. Now, I wouldn't say this is huge, but that is displaying at 54% and I've got a 27 inch monitor. So it's about three and a half meg and it could probably do with being a little bit smaller for speed. So what I'm going to do is I'll uh, resize that to 50% and that way well, things should move a whole lot faster. So I'll take that down to... Hmm, can I put percent in there? There we go, and make it 50%. And okay to that. And then I'm just going to zoom in. We should be able to get that up to 100%. So there we go. It's actually 120, but there you go, you can see it. Right, so what do we need to do to make this image far nicer, far uh, more wedding album friendly? Well, you could do an awful lot of things with it. But I'm going to start by um, adding in some effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is to right click on the layer. This is the actual image and I'm going to duplicate that layer so I can always go back to my original and compare it. So it's very, very, very similar to Photoshop. All the, it, the shortcut keys are very similar. Everything is very similar. So I've got my copy there and what I'd like to do is add an effect to it. So I'm going to add an effect to change the colour of it. So I go down to effect and I choose the effect that I want. And the effect that I want is colour control. So colour control's in there and uh, I'll move this slightly out of the way so you can see the main part of the photograph. And what I'd like to do is take the colour out of it. So I'm taking the colour down, down, down. I actually want that to be black and white. Now, once I get it down to black and white, it is quite dark given its subject matter, which is a wedding photograph. So I'm going to take that 
brightness up slightly just to soften it down a little bit and there we go now that is just an effect i have not taken the color information and thrown it away i've just masked it over with an effect so i'm quite happy with that that's not too bad at all now I still think the composition of, of the photograph is okay in the middle, but there's a lot of extraneous information that you don't need to see on there. And again, think wedding album cover. So I'm going to add a new layer, which is, um, if you're not familiar with layers, they're like sheets of acetate that you can put different pieces of information on. So anything that I put on this layer isn't affecting the actual pixels of the photograph. And what I want to do with this I'm going to go and get a colour and the colour that I want is white. So I go in there and choose white and that changes my uh, what well, colour is up here. So I've got white there and I need to fill the whole layer. Yes, it's going to look slightly odd, but bear with me. And again, it takes its sweet time as well. All right, let me go up there, make sure I've got white, get my bucket tool and over. Now, it, now you see, I don't want it to be pink. Let's flick them around. There we go. I've got white. Now, you're thinking that's not particularly a good look. No, it's not. But bear with me. What I now need to do is to make a selection. And obviously, I'm pretty much guessing. I'm going for an oval selection. I'm pretty much guessing at the minute where I would need to make that selection. I want to select around the faces. But I don't have to guess completely because if I take the opacity of this layer down, this white layer, and I can actually turn it off completely, there we go, then I can make a pretty good guess. So I want it around here, possibly a little bit further up there. So try again, there we go. Now, what I want to do is to cut a hole in this layer so I can see the faces, but I'm going to mask out all that extraneous information. Now the problem is, unless I do something with the selection, it's not going to look good. So just to show you what the problem is, if I just select an area and then say, right, I want to delete it. So I press delete. It's too harsh. It's far, far too harsh. So I'm going to undo that. And what you need to do is to alter your selection by feathering it. So I go into feather, and I know from the size of this image, I can feather that quite a bit. So let's try 62. Now, you're not going to see anything at all. But if you press delete, you can now see it's much, much softer. And I'm quite happy with that. It's got a little bit of the hair in it, but it's covering up what I don't want to see. So let's lose the selection there. So up to select and down to clear selection. And there we go. Now, the next thing I did with this was um, add some interest to it using brushes because now I've covered it up. If you think of it again, think of a wedding album. You tend to have some some sort of um, extra bits to it to make it look more weddingy. So we need it to look more weddingy. And the way that you can do that is to use brushes. Now, you will find on the net that you can get hundreds and hundreds of brushes for Photoshop. Luckily, making a brush is incredibly simple. Uh, I do have one that I created earlier. So I choose, I've chosen the brush tool and I've gone up here and I choose a brush. And there are some built in, as you can see. So I've got brushy, brushy and dots and lots of others. I've got erasers. I can go down to pens. I've got pencils, shapes, spaces and watercolours. Now shapes is a very good one. I'll show you what shapes actually does and you'll get the idea before I then actually do it properly. I'll go for paw prints because that's fairly obvious what that does. I'm also going to make my brush much, much bigger. And what you see with the circle there is my pointer. So wherever I click, that's when it, where it's going to paint. And what it's going to paint is paw prints. Not great for a wedding album, but you get the idea. So I don't particularly want paw prints. What I would like is something to look to look a little bit like confetti. So I'm going to undo that. Now, I could actually make my own brush. And the way I do that is to go to Open Brush Designer. And let's have a look in there. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. 
There are lots of options. You don't actually have to change too many of them to be able to get some kind of um, useful brush. You And you can just play around with them because some of these options make the brush random. So it's a case of clicking and if you don't like it, undo, do exactly the same thing again and, and the, the random nature of it will make what appears the second time totally different. So that's what we're looking at, but we don't want the paw prints. So I'm going to say use image and it's going to offer me uh, my file system. So I go into wedding photo and I have leaf brushes. Now what I have in here, you'll see at the bottom, I have a chestnut leaf. Now I know it's green and it doesn't look like confetti. Bear with me. Right, it's literally just a leaf, uh, just a photograph of a leaf against a very, very white background. So I'm going to click open with that and that will put that in my brush designer. Now, you can't see too much on the right hand side. So again, I'm going to zoom in there because it's half transparent, but it is there uh, and I can actually make it bigger and you'll see that it will increase in size. Now I can also change all these other options. So maybe I want it squished, which will change how the brush actually looks. Uh, I want it to look like a leaf, so I'm not going to do that. I could rotate it if I wanted it to come in in a different way. That actually suits my purposes quite well. Then I can change the flow of it. Now this is, this is affected by um, as it paints onto the page. Now that actually looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do now is it says you can draw in the canvas to try out the brush. OK, so I'll go and try it first and I'm going to click. And here come the leaves. And as you can see, they are pink. They are not green. How come they are pink? They're pink because up here in my brushes area, pink is the colour that I have selected. So it's using that colour. If I wanted them green, then I change that to green. But that brush looks pretty nice. So I'm going to go back to the designer and I'm going to do what it says, which is Command and S to save it. Now, I don't want to overwrite the paw prints one. So I'm going to put in Wedding Leaf and save. And I've just created a new brush. If I go back over here and I go to Shapes, uh, we should see Wedding Leaf right at the bottom. So that's actually been successfully created. And then all I need to do is just dot those about where I want them. Now, when you're using a brush, you can change the size of the brush and that will change the size of the leaf. So I'm up to 150 here, but I can keep going if I use the up and down arrows. So going to there, I can also type in there. So if I want that to be 250, I can do that and then just click down here. And that random nature, if I had set the randomizer, then you'd see these brushes appearing in, these leaves appearing in different locations, in different sizes, and they'd be slightly rotated as well. So that's how I sort that out and make it much, much better. So just to show you what we started with, by turning these layers off, we started with that. Uh, first I made it black and white, then I put, um, a layer on there that was white. I took a cut out piece from it by feathering the edge and then I put some nice leaves on the top of it. And that was really simple and only took just over 10 minutes.